Hello, this is Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and my project today is a kind of peaceful but very colorful tropical scene using the Lawn Fawn Life is Good stamp set and a funky watercolor effect for my background. So I have a piece of Arches hot press watercolor paper um, that's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. Hot press is smooth. Cold press has a bit of a texture to it. So I'm just getting it really wet with my flat sort of wide water brush. And now I'm just taking some zigs and dotting them on to the wet paper to try to get some color blooming action happening. But it's not really working. <laughs> and I think there's a couple problems. First, the zigs are small, like the zigs are of small surface, like the brush tips themselves are, are small, so it's not going to put a lot of color out. And then the wetter they get, the less color they want to produce. So, and then some of the lighter ones really don't want to do it once they get wet. So that's why I think I was just lacking enough pigment, really, to get the, the funky, I wanted that sort of crazy color blooming effect that you get when you when you touch like a lot of watercolor pigment to a lot of water it kind of goes nuts to get some like funky dimension so I grabbed my brushes so that was turquoise and this is sea green and I'm just going to take my brush and just smoosh it around in the in the big puddle of water and you know normally with brushes what I do is I sprinkle it and then I spray it with water and just watch it bloom um this was a slightly different technique but I was pretty happy with how it came out um pretty funky like the smushing it with the brush didn't blend it too much it kept uh, some of the colors separate but yet it's still got that funky um, sort of blooming effect to a certain extent although it's kind of streaky and I like that about it so while that's drying I am stamping the stamps from the life is good stamp set um, in archival jet black ink onto Bristol smooth cardstock I'm going to be coloring these stamps with my zigs and this is my favorite paper to color with zigs on. <laughs> it blends beautifully. Um, the markers blend together really nicely, either together or with water on the bristle. So for my crab, I am using 23 scarlet red as the lighter color, then I'm adding 22 carmine red as the darker color, and then I will blend him back out with the 23 scarlet red. I'm not gonna use any water on some of these elements because I did want them to be pretty brightly colored. Now the crab I don't actually wind up using, um, but I didn't know that at the time and it's always good to have a little extra crab lying around here and there. <laughs> Can use them on something later. Now for my palm trees, I started off there with pale green, that didn't work, so I went to 41 light green and then I'm going to add some shading with 47 may green, but those are fairly close in value. And I'm going to blend with the 41 light green, but it's a little flat. It's not terrible, but I just thought, I don't know, I wanted more. But at this point, I realized I need some coconuts for my trees. So I forgot to stamp coconuts. So I grabbed the coconut stamp and I stamped a couple of coconuts. So I would have those for later. And then I realized I should zoom in. So I did. <laughs> And now I'm using 40 green, which is much darker, and I'm blending that with the 41 uh, light green, and I will again blend a little bit more with the may green, and that's going to give me a little more of the sort of dimension that I wanted on these palm trees. You know, they're pretty whimsical, so the shading's a little bit cartoony, I guess, but that's okay. I was I like that about the style of these stamps. My trunk is 60 brown and then this is 65 mid brown and then I will blend back again with the 60 brown and as you can see I'm just blending all of these with the markers there's no water involved but soon very shortly I will grab some water <laughs> so my coconuts were the same combination of 60 brown and 65 mid brown now I'm going to add a little bit of 60 brown to my hammock for the like stretcher part and then I'm going to grab 91 light gray, and this is where I'm going to grab some water just to blend out the, the light gray for just the tiniest bit of shading on my white hammock. And then for my sand, I've got 64 oatmeal and 67 mustard, and then I'm going to blend that with a little bit of water. My starfish, I'm using 52 bright yellow, 
and I will blend that out with water as well and then add a, go back and add a little bit more and then blend a little bit more. Starfish I don't wind up using either because the color just wasn't right but always good to have them extra. And then my star sand dollar that I do use is 28 pale pink with some water blended there as well. And that is the coloring on this and I will die cut these out with the matching dies as you see there. Now I have also stamped the Life is Good sentiment onto a piece of Nina Solar White using VersaFine Onyx Black ink and I've cut that into sort of a, a strip and I'm gluing my coconut to my palm tree, just one palm tree, with my Zig 2 -E glue pen. And there's the dried watercolor panel and you can see how f funky it is. Like it's, it doesn't really dry the way you would expect it. Like I, I expected the bottom especially to be a lot more crazy like a lot more streaky but it really kind of is almost there's only a little bit of dimension on it and then the sky part has much more and I but I really love it I love the way it came out I think it's really really fun and really bright it's very turquoise and super pretty now to separate my banner from the background I'm using some antique linen uh, distressed ink and I'm kind of smooshing it on there to get a bit of a distressed look to that banner a little bit of sandy look and now I'm going to uh, glue slash tape down all of the elements in the little scene using a combination of zig 2 -week glue pen and some three millimeter Elizabeth craft designs double-sided adhesive tape I did trim that watercolor panel down just a touch so there is a bit of an eighth like an eighth of an inch border on the top and bottom so I'm using some scrap pieces of paper from the Lawn Fawn Perfectly Plaid Paper Pad <laughs> to uh, adhere to the top and the bottom to just fill in those gaps and add a little bit of a border. And that is the original Perfectly pa Plaid Paper. And there now I've decided my banner needed something extra so I broke out something I haven't used in years which are mini brads like when's the last time you used mini brads but they're kind of cool and I have a lot of them <laughs> so my spellbinders tool-in-one tool here has a pointy end on one end and then the brush part is for getting die cuts out of dies which is amazing and so I'm just uh, poking a hole through both the banner and the watercolor piece so I can uh, stick the brad through and spread it onto the back and then the left hand side is pretty close to the words so it's not quite evenly spaced but oh well it's handmade right <laughs> but I do take the little um, the pokey tool and try to uh, enlarge that hole just a little bit so I can push it a little bit more to the left and that helped a tiny bit and that was looking good but the banner needed a little bit extra so I took some 10 millimeter double-sided adhesive tape and and just added that under the ends just to make sure it would stick in place onto that watercolor panel. And then I'm going to trim off the excess and then I will adhere the entire watercolor panel down to the A2 size top folding card base that I've got going there with that 10 millimeter clear double-sided adhesive tape from Elizabeth Craft Designs. This tape is super strong. It works really well. My ATG gun does not like to adhere watercolor paper at all. And the better quality of the paper, it really won't do it. So Arches is pretty nice. So I didn't even bother with my watercolor with my ATG gun. I just used the adhesive tape. Plus the watercolor was a little bit warped from being wet. So the tape will really hold it down flat. And I had a tiny bit of excess glue on that seagull. So that was when I was scraping off there with my fingernail. And the card was a tiny bit too big. So I'm trimming off the excess. And that is the completed project. And check out that fun background. I don't know. I mean, I think it's really cool. And it was super easy. So, and I just love the, the peaceful tropical scene. But I love tropical islands and tropical vacations. And I really want one. So I think that was my inspiration for this card. <laughs> but hopefully I've given you a little inspiration today. And maybe you should try uh, doing a watercolor background like that. It was really easy um, and really fun. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, supplies are linked in the video description and over on my blog. Here are two more projects that I have done in the past using Lawn Fawn products. They are so cute. Um, if you, and you can always follow me on Black Sheep or at Black Sheep 303 on Instagram. So thanks. Have a great day.